This is my Sakashima the Imposter deck. It's Mono Yu. So this is uh, Sakashima the Imposter. Uh, of course, it's it's mono blue, so I have a bunch a uh, bunch of basic lands, uh, a whole gaggle of them. I actually ran out of my regular basic lands and had to use you know, snow-covered swamp, unglued. I don't use any of the expensive fetch lands because I don't need them here. It's just a monocolor deck. Usually this is good enough for me. Um, of course, the original fetch land. I really like it. I think it's the best. Um, this, there's a couple legendary creatures in here, so it's pretty nice to give them vigilance or you know, just untap some of these. You know, it, says, it does say legendary permanent, so you can help somebody else out. You can untap their, uh, you know, their, uh, their big dude, uh, get them going in there. Of course, cycling land for blue. I run Command Tower. It's like, why why run Command Tower in a monocolor deck? That's a good question. I want it because other, I know other people run Vesuva, and if I play Command Tower, I can still tap for blue just like an island, but other people can copy it with Vesuva, and it can help other people going. Again, theme of the deck is Mono U. Um, of course, that's why. Uh, Soldevi Excavations. Um, it's an awesome land. Like, if you play Coral Atoll, this is Coral Atoll that can scry. So, just saying. Academy Ruins, of course, recursive uh, artifacts, blue, um, reliquary tower, pretty, pretty much a staple for holding your hand. Uh, Petrified Field just gets back stuff when somebody gets really mad that you that, that you have a bunch of extra cards in your hand, blows up your reliquary tower or your Academy Ruins, you can get it back. But you know, I don't run Crucible Worlds here, so it's a one shot. Of course, High Market, good sacrifice outlet. Um, Winding Canyon, because blue decks love to be tricky and, you know, zap, flash something in. There's a couple other cards in here that let me do stuff like that. Of course, the Land Tutor, but it also taps for blue, because we all know blue needs more tutors. But Deserted Temple, you know, can untap something. Um, and then I have a couple Man Lands. Uh, you know, Zoeta Cavern I can play as a morph if I, if I need it. You know, of course, blue is usually creature light, so having some Man Lands in here helps me keep my... My, my mana density without necessarily sacrificing the blue effects that you want to cast the spell, you know, that are creatures. A couple more. I think I'm just missing Ink Moth next at this point. And of course, Mystifying Maze, a Maze of it, uh, you know, the defensive decks. You don't have a lot of removal in blue, so you'll take it where you can get it. Temple of the False God. Some mana. Um, and then a couple land destruction spells, because some people, you know, love Dia's Cradle or... Uh, Cabal coffers, and so it gives you a way of, of addressing that. And again, without uh, without Crucible Worlds, I'm not doing this uh, over and over. It's just uh, you know, it's it's a when I need it, not because I want to do it. And here we get into the um, the main part, which is the U part, copy. Uh, I want to copy all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I run copy enchantment. You know, somebody's running uh, you know Marari's Wake or a Privileged Position. I'll just go ahead and have one too. Thanks. Reigns of Power. Um, it's not a copy, but you're kind of copying. Just like I'm just going to swap up a whole bunch of stuff here. Twin Cast. Copy your spell. Um, dominate. Obviously, this isn't a this isn't a copy, but you probably want to copy it anyway. Um, instant speed. It's good for messing up combat. People forget that there's an instant speed um, steal. You know, again, a Sufin Shapeshifter. You know, classic copy spells. I love, I love when somebody has like a swords out that you really need, or, you, or they have like a mind's eye or something like that, and you just go ahead and get it, but um, the fact that it's still a clone makes me happy, because there's just so many creatures you just want to copy um, if you get the chance. Kega, because it steals when, when they kill it, so don't kill my Kega is pretty much uh, why I use that. Uh, Catherine Counterpart copy is my stuff, it's not target player, but uh, close enough. You know, the original doppelganger, uh, so you get something different every turn, you can copy somebody else's clone, the original. Um, Gilded Drake, you know, it's less copying and more swapping, you can, you can steal like the really good guy if they, if they have something going on, or you can even get like a utility guy that you find useful, uh, somebody has an activated ability you want to start using for yourself, like, um, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but you know it when you see it, which is the beauty of Commander. Uh, of course, the biggest copy spell around, um, 
people love the sky. Uh, or a thief. Um, people love people love their enchantments. People love to, to do them. So uh, instead of always blowing them up, maybe I'll just take them from you for a little while. Uh, desertion is one of the three counter spells in the deck. Um, and obviously, stealing their stealing their creature artifacts is pretty good. Um, it's more of like an emergency type button. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right of application, you can't have a copy deck without the best. Abduction is a really awesome spell. People people complain about steal like like uh, control magic and stealing all their stuff. Well, I'm not stealing it. I'm borrowing it. And if somebody else exiles it, that's their that's their problem on you, not me. You were getting it back. Sculpting steel, of course, or copying. Uh, follow footsteps. A lot of people don't like, uh, you know, auras in commander because they die. But you know, just one in here, you know, it's, it's fun. But you, know, you start copying, and you get a whole bunch of clones going on, or a whole bunch of whatever the clone copied, I should say. Um, the Sumin Sumin doppelganger is pretty hilarious. With um, or the Sumin shift shift is pretty hilarious with follow footsteps because they gain the ability. Uh, copy artifact. You'll notice copy artifact was back in the day. Copy enchantment was more, and now when the creatures they copy creatures, they're even more. There's a reason copy effects keep costing more. Uh, Echo mage, you know, because twin cast, you know, or double or double twin cast, you know, I guess it's a fully leveled red mage. Uh, and here we get into some big mana effects because you're mono mono colored. It's really easy to ramp up. So you know, gauntlet of power, um, grand architect, uh, you know, just power out any big artifacts you have going on, like cage sun. Uh, Soul Ring, uh, and then and that's it. Yeah, I got a couple a couple in there, and then there's some kind of group hug, you know, love everybody type effects. So you've got you know Howling Mind, everybody draw cards, everybody gets to dump a permanent into play basically, but not a Planeswalker because that's baloney. Everybody draws more cards. Everybody draws more cards. You know, it's pretty sweet because everybody, you know, as long as you keep using the everybody draw cards, they start to ignore it, and then you mill somebody for ten random cards. Yeah, which can also be helpful if you're playing against a graveyard deck. You can help them out. Uh, Will Bender, because who doesn't love messing with other people's spells? Because sometimes, you know, somebody somebody just doesn't need that third uh, um, time stretch. Of course, Mind's Eye. Um, yeah, so you can copy it with your with your artifact copy spells. Mystic um, Study, of course. Uh, Flash. Uh, you know, Flash is a little is, is a little fun one because no, people don't remember that you can actually like flash out your one coil engine or something like that. So you, yeah, if you look at it as as a discard as disc, as a adding, you can cast this as an instant discard a card. It's great. You, know, you can just surprise people all the time with it. Um, especially when you do like something like Mer Battle Sphere. It's like you've got a whole bunch of tokens against the token deck. It feels pretty good to to have a defense they weren't counting on. Uh, of course, again, your removal you'll take it where you get it. Batter Skull and I have Bone Horde in here because uh, the the artifact creatures that the, art, the artifact equipment that are also creatures are great because it gets you an awesome equipment you need for your deck but helps your creature count. Uh, of course, one coil engine. Sphinx of the Thune is awesome. I, I love these kind of cards. You know, it's a big, huge, dumb flying Sphinx that drops actor fiction. This is Commander in a picture. Warfling, because Warfling's still cool, despite all what the cool kids say. You know, Mole Drifter, you know, uh, you know, this is stuff for us. You know, you got, you got some powerful stuff that you do with other people, but you got your own stuff going on here, too. Some of the Akron, uh, you know, you get mana ramping. First Concentrated Sphinx. Uh, Frost Titan, you know, it's, you know, it's not even that great. You know, it just taps one permanent, but just a big, huge, cool blue creature. Um, and, of course, I hate... Uh, I hate Sensei's Binding Top anymore these days. It's just even though players use it right and they they don't waste everybody's turn, it's just it's still a big time waste. I just want to scry every turn and go find something I want. Like if I don't like the cards on top, well, I'll send them away and go hopefully find something else. Druidic Satchel again, it's it's mana ramping where you can get it. Sometimes you gain a little bit of life, which is great for a mono colored you know mono blue deck, uh, or you get a little sapling, which is useful. Yeah, and then here's uh, some some tricky stuff. You know, be able to play anything when you want to do it. Uh, you know, your standard equipment sort of, sort of uh, light and shadow, sort of fire and ice, uh, so you can get in there. Lightning Greaves to help protect something really cool that you copy, or Sakushima. Um, 
uh, you copy somebody that has uh, an attack trigger, like say Primeval Titan, you get to use them right away before somebody can, can play Wrath of God. Um, Trailblazers boots I have in here because you know what, blue decks, uh, especially like this kind of deck that doesn't control the game so much, just kind of play along and and get to do some cool things. Like this lets you slap it on something that you copy when you when you hit somebody and actually get some damage in or uh, make it unblockable. I don't know. Even the mon even monocolor decks play tons of non-basic lands, so this is basically make anything unblockable anytime. Again, back to the emergency reset buttons, I have Spell Crumple and Hinder in here, and again, those are reserved for, you know, when, when the when the, when the fit hits the Shan and you've got to hit the stop button, you have it. You, know, you just hold on to it and you just wait and hold tight. Uh, propaganda to help slow down uh, token decks, which blue decks, you know, can kind of struggle with. Um, Proteus Staff, it's blue removal or blue creature tutor if you've got awesome creatures in your deck. You know, it does really weird, cool things. Uh, of course, more blue removal than anything else, but it also copies the power of toughness of somebody else's. Oblivion Stone and Nevenerals Disc. Again, wrap effects. And finally, Brittle Effigy, the last, you know, Luka spell. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. Uh, please subscribe and favorite.